These are the pictures I took of my Rebecca cosplay. Obviously, right now, they are nothing special. What do you think, Larry? Eh? Either taken in my room or in front of a green screen, but with just a little bit of editing magic, this is what I was able to turn them into. Today, I'm going to show you how to edit the background of your photos, color correct, and even change your eye color to take your cosplay pictures to the next level. So let's jump into it. Yes, no green screen is required for these edits. So to edit these photos, I am going to be using Affinity Photo 2. It's a photo editing software that's pretty similar to Premiere Pro, but the only difference, which I really like, is it's a one-time payment of, I think, $75. So instead of paying a monthly fee of like 30 bucks for Photoshop, you're gonna be doing a one-time payment on this with pretty similar layout, which is pretty nice. And yeah, it also has a month-long free trial, so I did actually use that to edit these photos the first time and found out I really liked the program. So that's what we're gonna be using today. So obviously, the first thing we wanna do is get rid of the background, which I know I did this in front of a green screen. The first time I tried editing these photos and just removing the green screen, the green screen function worked really weird because my green screen obviously isn't smooth. It's not very well lit. So it turned out kind of weird. So I ended up just removing the background like the normal way. So if you don't have a green screen, you can still do these methods. Let's talk about what the method is. First thing we wanna do is come over to the side and we're gonna grab the selection brush tool which is this little orange one. Click on that, and then it's really small right now, so I'm gonna use the little, these keys, like the bracket keys, to make the brush either bigger with the right one or smaller with the left one. So I want it kind of bigger now because we're trying to select me. So it can be a little big. So I'm just gonna start clicking around and you can see it's like selecting me. And it's pretty good, especially on like the skin or like your body and stuff with understanding what's the background and what is you. So like already we're off to a very good start. So if I wanna like edit some of these smaller parts, I'm gonna shrink down the brush and then click to get them cleaner. Get rid of that. Push that one out a little bit. Maybe like right here, that's like part of me and then See how this went too far out? To get rid of that, you hold your Alt key and click on the other side to like delete it. You can see how that worked there. You can do that down here, hold Alt and click and it'll like snap to where your skin is. And you might have to do a little back and forth, but in the end it's pretty easy. Okay, over here like totally missed. So let's just get that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Go all around. We'll talk about the hair and stuff in a second. So let me just make sure the body's good. And it actually looks pretty good already. Not bad. Okay, so for the hair and like my headband, you can see the greens are kind of blending here. So it's a little confused, but if I just click, you can kind of figure that out. And then the hair is like pretty good. It's really hard to get all these individual strands. So sometimes I just let those like get deleted and like fade into the background. And I'm gonna alt right here and just push that back. Especially with this hair color and the green screen. I wish I'd done this in front of like a black background because the green screen and my hair color blend over here a lot. Over here, it's a little more obvious, but like this stuff, it's just gonna be so hard to like get that perfect. What you can do, kind of like touch up the hair. If you want a little more detail on the hair, what you can do is go up here, click on refine, and that's gonna bring up this. So what you do is with this little brush you, they give you, click over the spots you want it to like take a second look at and have the program try to figure out the hair. Just brush over that and have it refine it. Looks like it did a pretty good job actually. So. All right, and then you can hit apply. And you can see what it did. It did does seem like it actually touched up a little bit more here. So that's kind of nice. Um, this looks a little funny, so I might just get rid of that if I don't want to deal with it. And I don't. So yeah, I'm just going to go like, and once again, I'm hitting alt to remove. And then I'm just hitting clicking with the key without alt to add. So yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with this. I think the body looks good. I think the hair is probably as good as it's going to get. Yeah, I think we're good to go here. So what you do next is you hit this little one, mask layer. Boom, now it's just me all alone. Probably should have cropped the bottom. Well, actually, before I do that, let me make sure this is a little weird right there, you can see. But we can just press Control D to get rid of the lines. And then we can start touching up the mask. So I'm gonna go to my paintbrush tool and I can actually paint on the mask and add stuff and delete stuff. So white adds stuff back in and black erases stuff. So like this area is really weird. I don't know what really happened there. I'm just gonna erase some of this outside stuff. Goodbye. Let me take the white and like add back in where my hair is kind of like transparent here. 
because that's strange. And I'm adding a little bit back in, but I'm gonna zoom in really close and touch it up with the other color. This area just looks a little funny. So now I'm gonna do is shrink down my brush. Once again with the bracket keys, go back to black and erase. Okay. So I fixed the hair, it looks a lot more normal now. And yeah, that's pretty much good for the mask, I think. I like that. So let me crop the bottom of this photo. And then just hit apply, boom. Okay, fixed that. So now that we've got our person, or me, all removed from the background, it's time to add in our new background. So I'm gonna go to file and I'm gonna hit place this time. Okay, here's the one I wanna use. It's like this cyberpunky futuristic background. So I'm gonna hit open and then I'm just gonna click. And then right now it's in front of me, but if I drag it down into the left of my photo, it will go behind me, but in front of the mask layer. So now I can just make it bigger to fit the picture, obviously. Now it's like, okay, that's great, but wait, what's going on? What are all these green shadows? Uh, it's from my green screen, of course. So how am I gonna get rid of those? Well, I'll show you, I will show you. This is where the next phase comes in. We've got the background. The next phase is color grading. And that's how I'm gonna fix my green and make it look like I fit more in with this background. So let's get into color grading. All right, and we are moving on to color grading this photo. The first one I like to add is um, underneath adjustments. This is like half circle. And then I click on selective color. Let me just say that I like, I don't know that much about color grading. This is what I've learned from watching a few videos. Cause when I was doing this, I was like the green, what are we doing? So this is just like the little bit of information and knowledge I know about color grading. So <laughs> hopefully what you learn here can help. Selective color is gonna add or remove colors based on where you're dragging this stuff. So if you drag it into the magentas, like obviously the pinks are gonna stand out more. And if you drag it away, they're gonna look more like this and like bring in the opposite color. So right now we're in the reds. So I'm gonna go to the greens cause we are trying to get rid of the greens. And then I can drag like cyan and look at like when you drag it all the way over here, how much greener I get versus when you go farther over here, how like less green, especially the shoulder area is like you're super green, not very green. So I am probably going to drag this pretty far over because I want to get rid of that. It does affect the hair a little bit, but not too much. So maybe I'll just go like with a mid. So it's not affecting my hair color too much. And then the same thing, like if I take the magentas and add more magentas, it gets rid of that green on the arm and stuff too. So I'm gonna add a little bit more magentas to once again, disguise the fact that I'm in front of a green screen right now. Once again, the yellows, more yellow equals more green, less. So I'm just gonna drag this one a little bit. And then if I remove and add this, you can see the difference that that already made. So that's the first thing I like to do, and I think that makes a pretty huge difference right out the gate. The next thing I like to do is add cur curves and then add three points. One at the middle, one at the bottom, and one at the top. And then what you do is you drag the one at the top up just slightly, just ever so slightly, and the one at the bottom down. And then it creates like this S-curve thing. If you see this, you add and remove it. It does make a pretty big difference. And the photo I think looks a lot better just from that small change. Now the last one I like to add is the gradient map. And obviously it looks really insane right now, but if you go to blend mode, it must be soft light. Okay, and then you remove the middle pit. And then you can add, like the opacity is really high right now, but if you lower it, like you can see how that actually looks pretty, like that's pretty cool already, right? So you can change these colors too. For Rebecca, I actually like to do a pink and teal so you wanna do colors that like contrast each other. So like you can see all the red and blue. You can also do like orange and teal. What I like to do is like a pink and a teal, but have the teal up, up there on the highlights and then add the pink down here because it's Rebecca. So like her signature colors are obviously teal and pink. Might be a pretty dark pink, but you know, it works. And then you can change the opacity. Obviously this is the most intense is the least and then I can kind of just drag it to where I like it and then I can remove it and see the difference. I don't know if I like that. That might be too teal. 
I want to darken that up a little bit. So yeah, it just adds a little bit. I don't like to make this super intense. You can see the difference with that. Like it's not huge, but it does add a little something, you know? So yeah, you can kind of play around with those colors as well. And then, like I said, I like to drag it to zero and then kind of just see what looks good. I kind of think like around the 1920 mark looks pretty good for this picture. So if we remove all our filters, all our color filters, this is what we started with. And this is what we have now. I think that's a pretty good difference. Okay, one thing I want to do really quick before we move on, which I already did, but I'll show you how I did it, was blur the background a little bit because I feel like it just looks a little goofy with this image. I don't know. I'm just kind of feeling like I want to blur it a little bit. Just like a little bit, nothing crazy. Like you can go all the way, but I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to do like a slight blur like that. What you do is you go to the little like hourglass looking thing, click on that, add a Gaussian blur and then you can pick how much you want it to blur it. So I just want to do like a little bit of a blur just to make it look a little less weird. I also cropped, you'll notice, I cropped the image because I wasn't super thrilled with how like small in the corner I was. So I did crop the image a little bit so it's like a little bit closer. But yeah, let's get back to the color correcting. Let me show you the last two things. I feel bright still. So what I'm going to do is I like to go into brightness and contrast. And I'm just going to bring down the brightness a little bit and increase Oh, this is not above me, so I'm not getting in that. I was like, why do I not look any different? So yeah, I'm just going to bring down the brightness a little bit and then increase that contrast, which is giving me some more shadows. And the other thing I like to do is grab the color balance. And I'll bring this down. Not that much. And this, yeah, this one down a little bit. And you can see how that adds like the blues into my face. Okay, that's definitely better though. And that's with the contrast and the brightness adjustment. And then if you take away the color balance, you can kind of see how that brings the blues and the pinks into me. Play with it until I have it how I like it. And then I can remove and add to see how I'm feeling about it. And you can see the yellow here, but then when I add it back in, how that's like blue now. So like the lights are reflect, you know, it looks more like they're reflecting off of me. I blend in better with the background because I'm darker and I match better. That's pretty much it for color correcting. Let's move on to how I do the eyes. All right, we are now on the final step, which is changing the eye color. So Rebecca's eyes, they're pretty wild. They have like pink on the outside here, green here, and then pink here. I think I'm just gonna go for pink on the outside and then green right here to kind of give that vibe. So how do you make the eyes look like? First thing you need to do is go to your shape key, to shape, shape tool, and you pick the circle. Next thing you wanna do is shape it to look like the eye. Okay, so once I have it shaped like pretty, pretty close. Okay, once you have your shape, go to the adjustments, click HSL. Make sure HSL is beneath your eclipse shape. Click on your eclipse shape, right click on it. Go down to mask to below. Click that and now it is masked to the HSL. So from here, click on the eye and you can drag this thing around and ta-da! You can change the eye color. So we're looking for a pink here. It's more blue, so we need to change that. There we go. And then you can make it as intense or as not intense as you want. So I want this to be pretty intense, but obviously that looks like ridiculous. So we're like right there if I zoom out. Like, yeah, that looks pretty good, right? So I think I'm going to go with that. And then I can just copy and paste one more and move that to the other side. And then I'd, all I have to do is shape it, make it match the new eye. There, now it's not cutting over the um, eyelids so much. So if I zoom out, check to see if it looks insane. This one I think maybe is a little too big, still looks a little insane. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let me just click on the other one and tone down the intensity just a titch to match the other one. I... Then if I zoom out, my eyes are pink. Ta-da! So now, to change the pupil, I have to do pretty much the same thing. Gotta make another shape. Gotta shape it to the eye. Just the circle part this time. So I'm making a circle. Then put it at the top, add another HSL layer, put it at the top again, right click it, mask to below and then I can click on the eye thing and boom it's a little off but I can fix that and I want to make it green that's way too intense we've got to tone that down yeah so I just kind of adjust the shape and play with the color until I like zoom out and it doesn't look crazy which I think that looks pretty good 
I want the eyes to look pretty robotic and stuff, so I think that's all right. And then we will just copy this one, move it over to the other eye. Zoom back out, ta-da! Two pink and green eyes, oh my gosh, we did it! All right, everyone, that is it. That is the whole photo edited. Thank you so much for watching. If anything in this video helped you, let me know. Send me your pictures on Instagram. I want to see them. If you liked, give this video a like. If you want to see more cosplay videos from me, then subscribe, and I will see you next time. Peace.